Okay, the ICT director for today, Julia, says we can start, so we are online. Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Gianluca Corzani. I'm a, a member associate of Areuropa Team, a consultancy firm from Bologna, Italy. And we are part of the partnership consortium of Circular Bricks project, a European project that we will present today. We will present it today for this third webinar of uh, the Circular Bricks project. Uh, our focus today will be on design thinking and other non-formal educational methods for a more engaging teaching. Here with me, I got different guests I will present to you. From Benedetta Marotti, our Circular Bricks design thinking expert who has worked with us on this project, on different project results. She will narrate to us and she will tell us how the approach of design thinking to circular bioeconomy bio has worked in this project and she will narrate the experience and results of this uh, collaboration. And then with me today, I'm happy to welcome Paula Beaudean, founder of Syschool for Creative Acts, and she will narrate diverse and different Erasmus Plus projects in which she worked. She's a design thinker too, and uh, we, we would love to hear about the application of design thinking in particular to youth social entrepreneurship project called Centra. And then last but not least, we got Silvia Fazio from Turing, Escape for Change organization. Uh, they're dealing with non-formal education methods and edutainment tools to provide effective new forms, innovative forms of teaching and experiences in uh, under the umbrella of the European projects too. So before starting with this uh, networking webinar, I would give you a little brief overview on what is the project Circular Bricks what has been and what it will be until its end. Its focus is on education and training in the circular bioeconomy. And as I was saying, is an Erasmus Plus project, KA220, a cooperation partnership in vocational educational and training. Uh, our subtitle of this project is Circular Bioeconomy for Improving Agri-Food Vet Institute's Teacher Skills and Competencies. Uh, through this project, we want to address different priorities under the umbrella of the Erasmus program, but the most transversal one, the most horizontal one of all of our projects, I would say, is the environment and fight against climate change. And then we got some other priorities related to the vet world, to the vocational educational training, so adapting vocational education and training to labor market needs and contributing to innovation in vocational education and training. Tackling different topics and challenges such as environment, as we said, climate change, trying to provide green skills to teachers and students all around Europe and try to create and foster this entrepreneurship, education and spirit mindset. Uh, this is the consortium of our project. We got three different, three different technical partners and four vet school in order to broaden the most the impact on uh, the educational system with this project. So we got the leader, coordinator of the project, University of Rome, Unitel Masapienza, who's hosting uh, right now. Thank you for the platform. Uh, Are Europa, as a consultancy firm from Bologna and La Unio, from Valencia. Then we got four schools, as I was saying, Federación La Malvesia from Spain, Liceu Lelias from Romania, Diek Ioanninum from Greece, and Enai Impresa Sociale Veneto from Italy too. What's the mission? What has been the mission and what is right now the mission of this project? Uh, we're trying to help to train and educate the next generation of circular bioeconomy professional, uh, the students we are trying to engage with this project with the necessary hard and soft skills, green skills. And we think that from an analysis of the needs we have mapped before ideating this project, 
we need to rethink and improve our current educational model for addressing it to the circular bioeconomy. This is obviously a long-term ambition. We know we are a little part, a drop on the ocean, but we think that this is the direction we need to go as community, as European community, but also from a global point of view in order to try to change the economical partner that has brought us to this crisis we are living nowadays from the pandemics to the ecological crisis and so on. So this is a little bit of uh, an overview of the strategies and policies framework in the European context we are we are moving into, so from the bioeconomy strategy to the circular economy action plan to the farm to fork strategy for sure, uh, related to the European new Green Deal. Uh, all of these uh, policies and strategies uh, share the mission, the objective, the general object objective of developing, producting uh, a new paradigm in which it possible to have the development, production and the use of renewable, renewable resources in order to produce food, energy, materials, chemicals, trying to open a way, paving a way to a more innovative, resource efficient and competitive society based, really based on circular bioeconomy. To do this, mapping needs, we identify the needs to train uh, well-trained workforces such as our European educational community from teachers to staff to professional and to inform and well-inform customers and citizens on this new paradigm we, we, want, to, we want to go through. Um, as I was saying, uh, uh, one of the priorities of the bioeconomy strategy in Europe is the key is the education, the training, and try to um, create this kind of expertise and knowledge and transferring knowledge uh, of bioeconomy inside the schools, because uh, especially in the, in the vet world, there's a lack of generalized schemes and curricula. And so we wanted to, we would like to create this kind of curricula in order to provide that teachers in the agri food in the agri food sector in particular to enable uh, the teachers educate their students which we hope will be the future generation of circular bioeconomy professionals with the necessary green skills that are right now required by the by the industries of the uh, circular bioeconomy world so the specific the specific objectives of circular bricks uh, to develop innovative pedagogical material on circular bioeconomy for vet teachers, enabling them to educate and engage them better. And that's why we are here today with innovative tools in order to create a new set of necessary green skills that are required today in the lab, in the labor market and stimulate and make the circular bioeconomy attracting to the younger generations. This is a, a little overview and the overview that says that we're trying to build in blocks, bricks, circular bricks, adding, trying to add to the know-how of the students and the teacher's curricula. And these are uh, the sum of the activities that we are uh, managing and developing in this two years project. We got three main project results. The first one has been, and it's ready, and you can download it for free on our platform, a pedagogical guide made up by three modules and uh, developed in collaboration from Unitel Masapienza, Aero Europa and La Union, the technical partners. Then the second project results uh, is an open online platform with a toolkit, a toolbox fulfilled by engaging and more engaging instruments and tool in order to uh, provide the teachers uh, something that could be fresh and storytelling uh, 
and more and more always more engaging tools uh, to to try to engage the, the the students in their schools and then we had this LTTA1 a learning teaching and training activity uh, we were in Valencia last November with Benedetta too then I will leave the floor to her to narrate this experience but we had we had so much fun in transferring all the material provided by the pedagogical guide to the teachers and to engage them with the tools of design thinking, such as Akaton, that we will see later, and make them try these new engaging uh, instruments and methodologies in order to let them have the uh, capacity then to replicate this kind of methodology when they are in their teaching environment in our four partner schools of the project. The third project result, in fact, will be uh, the design thinking session and that will uh, call together at least 100 students in six months sessions. They will develop innovative projects in order to promote their local their local circular bioeconomy uh, they're probably having it right now because it started uh, some months ago and it will finish before the summer and they will provide us with at least 20 business ideas coming from the long-term hackathon design thinking session that they are implementing right now and at the end of this uh, of this process they will have their business ideas and the business ideas will be peer reviewed by the students from the other vet institutions. So these 20 ideas will, will circulate among the schools, our partner schools, and we're trying to, to reach an impact that could be, could be real in this and exchanging a business idea and uh, fostering this uh, entrepreneurship business mindset in the field of circular by economy could be could be a great a great thing at the end uh, uh, obviously each at school will organize multiplier events and you will have news for us in the future so these are the main elements uh, that I've explained to you, the pedagogical guide made up by these three models, the training session for teachers, the toolbox for teachers, the design thinking session and the peer review. You can find all this material online for free, downloadable on the open platform for, for the teachers, but not only for the teachers on Unitelma Sapienza, then we will, we will link maybe in this YouTube video, the, the link in order to let you access and register in the, in the sustained platform from uh, Unitorma Sapienza in order to let you download all this stuff. And other main elements, uh, as you know, just to let the students recognize that there's a local economic fabric that is working in the field of bioeconomy and that it's possible to create and provide new solutions, new products, new projects in this in this field if we want to go to, to this direction, addressing and fostering the entrepreneurial spirit and involving the territory, so stakeholders, enterprises and companies. In the end, I would like to underline that Circular Bricks project uh, is right is proud to, to try to make networks all around Europe with bioeconomy projects. In this sense, we are here today in order to share good practices, best practices and examples of how these new forms of uh, edutainment and engaging methodologies could be uh, the key to activate this kind of uh, bioeconomy uh, by economy good circles of practices. So I will stop here because I've I've said uh, I've said too much already. And so these are the speakers. As I was saying, I will leave, I would leave the floor to Benedetta Marotti, who has been uh, the design thinking expert uh, of Circular Bricks. She's a facilitator, and she has facilitated. She's created a part of the manual in collaboration with Giulia Lombardo Picola from Are Europa. And uh, she will explain to us the design thinking methodology and approach with the experience and the results from our LTTA1 in Valencia. 
So Benedetta? Yes. Ciao. Thank you, Gianluca. <laughs> okay. I will go straight to my presentation. Okay. I think you see the slide. I hope. <laughs> Can you see? Okay. Yes. So let's start. Um, so in this uh, short speech, uh, I will tell you about uh, our experience and the result with the design thinking approach in the Circular Bricks project. And first of all, I want to say thank you to Gianluca Corzani, Giulia Lombardo Piola and Maria Elisa Zuppiroli who have uh, involved me in this project and have uh, contributed in the results uh, I will show you in this speech. So, um, these are the topics that will be covered in this speech. Uh, I will briefly explain what design thinking is, even if uh, I know that in this webinar there are people that uh, know what design thinking is better than me. And then I will tell you more about the strategies and the tools we designed from our team to bring design thinking in a Circular Bricks project. And in the end, I will show you some of these results. Well, so let's start with what design thinking is. A uh, design thinking approach, which was born and developed in the corporate context of the service design, but which over the years has been taken up and adapted to multiple contexts. Um, in a certain sense, uh, design thinking is a process that starts from the ambiguity of an unknown problem or context and leads to clarity, to deep understanding of the problem in order to identify effective solution. This is um, one of the many definitions of uh, design thinking you will find in the internet, but is one of uh, uh, that I believe best summarizes uh, the fundamental elements of design thinking. Um, IDEO is an agency that for the first time tried to explicate and simplify the process used by the professional designers to do their job. And their goal was to bring a design mindset out of design studios in a different context and application fields and let everyone to understand and apply the design process. The design thinking is, so is a process made, I, made up of five phases, research, abstraction, ideation, testing and evolution. Uh, this pattern is also called double diamond and uh, as, it graphic, as it graphically recalls the shape of a diamond. And as the shape of the scheme suggests, red phases, research and testing are phases of divergence, in which the goal is to collect as much information as possible about the challenge or the problem you are designing for. And the green phases, like abstraction and evolution, are instead phases of convergence, in which the goal is to select the information collected and make synthesis. So for each phase, uh, there are many tools that can be used. Uh, like, for example, in the research phase, you can make interviews or desk research or both of them. And the choice of the tool depends on the multiple factors like time, problem, uh, who will use the tool, etc. So, um, where and with whom can I apply the design thinking approach? In my opinion, uh, the answer to this question is everywhere and whoever, because uh, the point is that uh, design thinking is a human centered and problem based approach. So with design thinking, you are able to find innovative solution to any kind of problem from high engineering to your summer holidays. And whoever, because as mentioned before, every phase can be done with different tools and the tools can be adapted to the people you're working with. And uh, another question is uh, how much time I need to do it? And also, in my opinion, uh, the, the question is how much time you have, because uh, design thinking can be applied in few hours activities or in 
uh, months and months of a project. It, depend, it depends uh, from the challenge, the goal of the project you are using uh, and you are designing for. Um, now, uh, I would like to uh, tell you something about the tools and the strategies uh, we have used in a Circular Bricks project about the design thinking. Okay, so uh, specifically, this project talks about uh, design thinking for education. The goal in this case is to design training activities that aim to teach the design thinking approach to teachers. Uh, I've been working personally in this field for many years, uh, and I have had the opportunity to design and facilitate design thinking courses for teachers, middle school students, and university students. So in this project, the real goal wasn't the solution designed by each team, but uh, to make participants understand and become confident with the, the design thinking mindset. So our challenge as a work team at Europa uh, within the Circular Bigs project was to create tools uh, to let teachers apply the design thinking approach in their school with their student. We start from here. The first tool we have designed is the module three of the pedagogical guide on the circular bioeconomy. This chapter, this third chapter, uh, we, in this chapter we have included an introduction, an explanation of what design thinking is. Uh, for each design thinking phase, we have selected and presented two different tools, which we felt were most suitable for the people we were designing this tool for, the teacher. Okay. Finally, uh, for each tool, uh, we have created an annex of ready-to-print cards, which teachers can print and use in class with their students. The second tool uh, we designed is the video lesson introduction to the design thinking approach and presentation case studies. This video lesson was designed with the aim of reviewing and summarizing the contents of the third chapter of uh, the pedagogical guide to give teachers a shorter and more accessible way to approach to design thinking. The third tool uh, we designed is an hackathon. Uh, an hackathon is a design thinking based workshop that can list one or two days and uh, during an hackathon, people in teams design a solution to a given challenge. Uh, in particular, uh, our hackathon was about the circular economy and the challenge was to design an innovative solution to transform uh, Ephala Malvesia's bio waste into new reusable resources. We made this workshop in Ephala Malvesia School in Valencia with the teachers involved in the project coming from Italy, Spain, Romania, and Greece. And uh, the goal was to make teachers live and experiment this workshop to let them try to replicate it in their school. And to help them, uh, we have created also a short video that I will show you uh, to finish my presentation. If I will be able to do it. <laughs> Okay, let's try. I think we got a problem with the audio.
Okay, we are not able to see what we are looking for. Okay, because we are not. Uh, I'm hearing the music, but maybe maybe you are not. <laughs> so, um, uh, as uh, you have seen uh, uh, in this video, uh, during the hackathon, we pass by uh, all the phases of uh, design thinking. Uh, okay, perfect. <laughs> And uh, um, teachers have been working in teams. Uh, so now in this part of the video, we already are in the phase of ideation. And in this phase, uh, uh, each team uh, made a brainstorming to find out some solution to the challenge we gave them. And uh, after the ideation phase, they have uh, prototype uh, their solution. Uh, with uh, the staff and all the material they find out uh, uh, in the clouds and outside the school. They went in the garden, uh, they grab uh, uh, leaves and everything <laughs> they could found um, and to create a prototype because uh, the, the aim of the prototype is uh, to, to test the idea and to then improve and uh, make uh, uh, the idea better. And in the end, uh, for the evolution phase, each team created uh, a short pitch uh, about uh, the work they made uh, during the day, the, um, the, their process, uh, they created the process, create creative process as team. Uh, so some of them also created a logo uh, of the team and of their solution. And um, yeah, that's it, because the pitch is uh, a way to present your idea and then uh, give, have back some feedbacks to improve the idea uh, later. Okay. You can easily understand. <laughs> okay, grazie, Giulia. Okay, finish my... Thanks a lot, Benny. Sorry for uh, the technical problems. No. <laughs> we, we will improve. We will improve. It's the first time for all of us using WebEx, so we get some technicalities. And uh, our ICT directors back there is trying to, to solve it and manage it. So thank you, Gelsomina, and thank you, Julia. Um, well, as you have seen in the video, my over enthusiastic face during the hackathon LTA in Valencia, because uh, personally, I tried it with teachers in team with the teacher and I had so much fun. So I would like to underline also the value of uh, learning by having fun. You know? And I think this, uh, this concept is uh, always and uh, <clears throat> always the key to engage students from 15 to 19 years old so i think that maybe paula and sylvia to uh, share this idea of uh, trying to provide some sort of education that could be funny too because mm -hmm. we we got the notion we got the concepts we got the literature but if we try to create an environment in which it's easier to get the attention and to keep the attention of the students, uh, it will also uh, have more impact in the end of the, of the process of learning, no? So with this little introduction, I would leave the floor to Paola Beaudan, uh, the founder Hi. of the C School for Creative Acts, and she will talk to us about the Erasmus Plus Center project and other projects in which she applied design thinking as a design thinker, uh, in particular to youth social entrepreneurship. Hi, Paula. Hi, hi everyone, and thank you, Gianluca, for uh, the introduction. And thank you, Benedetta, for the... I was so amazed about the work that you already did with uh, Circular Bricks. It's incredible. And I just remember when Gianluca said that, oh, you know, we had such so much fun. I guess that's the sign that you did all the things right. Because, you know, all those great founders of design thinking from IDEO and uh, Stanford University, the design school, they say that if the process does not bring fun, that you are not doing it right. 
So definitely you did it, you did it right because you had the fun there and we can uh, we could see from the video that you had a lot of fun, especially in the prototyping phase and ideation. It's obvious that you did wonderful, wonderful work. And before moving into the presentation, I will just, if you allow me, it just came my idea, you know, while, uh, uh, you know, seeing the presentation uh, delivered by Benedetta, that, um, you know, design thinking, okay, it's a process, it's a problem solving method, as you said, but most of all, I think it's an approach mindset. So get the mindset that you need to be creative, that you need to empathize, you know, to uh, do your research, to understand your users, consumers, beneficiaries, no matter how you want to uh, call them. Um, then come up with, uh, you know, define very clearly the problem, come up with ideas, uh, prototype, test, prototype, test, you know, go into this iteration all, of, uh, all over again. However, you're going to see from my own presentation that the steps um, depending, you know, on the methods and the tools that we use, they might be called differently. You could see models with seven steps. You can see model with three steps, like inspiration, ideation, implementation, which are the three steps of innovation. You could see the model with the five steps um, that Benedetta shows you, or the model that I'll show you, still with the five steps, but with different names for the uh, for the steps. For instance, I use empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. It's the same, don't worry, it's the same approach, it's the same mindset. So even if you see us, the design thinker, using different uh, um, names, in the end it's the same process that we're all talking about. It's just, the, it's just you know, um, the name for the tools that we got used to, uh, to, you know, to use in our work, that's all. But we talk about the same thing, so do not worry. Absolutely, I completely agree. <laughs> exactly. Now, um, just a couple of words about uh, C-School. Uh, C-School is a um, startup, so very a young company started last year. Um, it has a social mission, as I, says, uh, as I said here, it's to support the development of creative confidence and critical thinking of young people, young entrepreneurs, organizations to positively impact their lives and their communities. Very shortly, you know, what uh, C-School does, Definitely, uh, we um, used uh, uh, great work from uh, Stanford, uh, from the design school and IDEO. These are, you know, the um, people and the schools that we look upon and we use their uh, processes, the way in which they define the design thinking and systems thinking processes and the human center approach. And uh, um, what we do with uh, at C School, we provide training courses, workshops, you know, mentoring, coaching sessions for young people, young entrepreneurs, and organizations. And we work basically with this uh, design thinking, system thinking. This will be our core um, core activities, let's say core uh, fields of action. And then uh, we also work with social innovation, social entrepreneurship, fundraising, crowdfunding. You know all kind of uh, interesting topics. Um, last year was the launching year, you know, the launching in the space of the company and it felt exactly like in this picture. However, we managed to reach over 250 young people from Romania, um, 50 NGOs from Rom Romania and Moldova, and to establish a long-term partnership with uh, an innovation hub uh, opened by the biggest bank in uh, Romania. Now, I was invited here not to talk about C-School, but I wanted to give you the, you know, the background of uh, what I'm doing. I was invited here to talk about uh, Centra Project, Social Entrepreneurship Accelerator Project, very similar with what you do with, cir with Circular Bricks. However, our focus was on youth social entrepreneurship and the work was, uh, all the work was done within the with youth work sector. Uh, we had five partners involved at the time, uh, an accelerator from Cyprus, Aris, Atlantic Technological University from Ireland, who was also the, the leader of the project, Fundacia Danis from Romania, foundation for which I worked for 10 years before uh, I started my company. Actually, I started, uh, I finished my collaboration with Fundacia Danis at the beginning of uh, this year, but I was the design thinker, uh, you know, representing Fundacia Danis in this project. 
North Census Media Forum, which is a Norwegian uh, organization, and Asset Technology, which is a consultancy company from Greece. So these were the initiator of the program that um, aimed to promote social entrepreneurship among young people by offering exactly as you want to do, you know, with the educators from VET, it's we wanted to provide non-formal learning tools, innovative tools to youth workers and youth organizations so they could support um, social entrepreneurship or social or other civic initiatives of young people. What we did in the project, this will be the three key um, results of course it's another erasmus plus project financed by european commission with the support of largas which is the national agency of erasmus plus in uh, ireland uh, the uh, key results would be some research conducted you know at uh, in uh, in the five countries that were involved in the project uh, we looked to the landscape of youth entrepreneurship and youth social entrepreneurship um, talking with almost 300 young people and around 70 stakeholders, youth organizations, NGOs, incubator, accelerators, social entrepreneurs, municipalities, whomever we thought that they are relevant, you know, to give us information about what's going on right now um, in this uh, uh, landscape. Then we develop what we call the Centra framework, providing a, a model of um, work uh, with young people so that uh, we could support them in developing their social and civic initiatives with a special focus on young people's interest towards the sustainable development goal. And finally, the tool that I'm sure that the people that are here following this webinar will be uh, most uh, mostly interested uh, about the, this one is the Centra Training Toolkit, which is around 150 pages of, you know, of a handbook that uh, provides uh, knowledge and workshop scenarios and facilitation journeys and uh, good practices on how to support young people to uh, design their social or civic initiatives, including social enterprises. This training toolkit was piloted uh, very similar with what you did in Circle Bricks in a um, training course, not a hackathon, but a training course, a five training course in Cyprus last summer, and those 25 youth workers that were trained during this transnational training, they went back home and they trained other, um, you know, more than 150 youth workers, you know, through local workshops. Now, just a short introduction of, you know, just a short presentation of what this training toolkit and you could download it for free, you could use it. So, as I said, it's more than 150 pages, like a real handbook that youth workers and not only youth workers any people you know any educator for instance that works with young people could use it um two big chapters like 60 pages okay of 60 pages of these training toolkits uh, are dedicated to design thinking first to provide basic knowledge of using design thinking you know to support young people and design social enterprises and then we provided you know facilitation journeys uh, that youth workers could use in um, working with young people and i will show you just a bit for that i uh, uh, went out of canva so that you can see uh, you know from the toolkit for instance you have here the uh, you know bit of knowledge that you could read, like if you are a beginner in design thinking, do not, not worry. We summarized many books here in the, a couple of pages. And then for each piece of knowledge, we provided ideas on workshops or facilitation journeys that educators could use. Just go there and see, okay, how can I introduce a design thinking process to young people? And here is an example of a workshop scenario that you could use to work with uh, young people. Describe step-by-step, step, explaining to you, you know, how you can use it with um, this. And it goes like this with over 20, maybe even more uh, scenarios that um, you could use in um, yeah, supporting uh, uh, young people. And I will show you what kind of tools uh, you could find there. Some of the tools actually were mentioned already by Benedetta, as I told you. The tools are similar. We just, what we did, we tried to adapt to the youth sector because that's, that was our um, target group. 
So uh, you see the five steps that I mentioned, uh, empathize, define, ideate, prototype, and test. And these are some of the methods that we describe in our training toolkit. And then we provide these facilitation journeys that educators, youth workers could use immediately um, and implement with the young people they uh, work with and support you know, them to develop their civic social initiatives. Okay. So, um, this was you know the work the project um happened 2020 2022 we finished it last summer this was you know from the training course that we had i told you in in cyprus where it was one full week uh talking about design thinking and uh, train the youth workers on how to use design thinking with young people i love your idea with prototyping and hackathon maybe next time we could use it with the youth sector and starting from there, I will just uh, do a very short another introduction on how we use design thinking, maybe to inspire uh, people on how to use it in designing projects. Um, you know, from Central Project, we observed to our research that three out of four young people lack the self confidence to, uh, you know, they need to initiate any project, community, social, social enterprise project. And that was very sad for us. And unfortunately, the project that we had did not really address this issue because we were so focused on training youth workers how to help young people that are already motivated, that are already have some self-confidence to start their own initiatives. So we said we do need to address this because, you know, we did our research, we did the empathized uh, step we saw there is a problem. So we said, let's get together in a networking event and see and try to explore what exactly we could uh, do to support young people to build the self-confidence, the resilience. So we organized this uh, networking event in um, February this year to explore the idea of developing um, um, an incubator, like a space, Not maybe incubator is not the right word, uh, but a space where we could support young people to, um, you know, build their confidence and resilience. And we organized a full event as a design thinking process. Again, it was supported by Erasmus Plus, Largas, you know, who already knew our story with Centra and the results of the project. We got similar partners there. However, some of the associated partners that we had in Central Project joined us this time as partners. And also we got new partners from uh, Netherlands and Norway. So again, we had Atlantic Technological University, Asset Tech Technology from Greece, C School from Romania, Gutenberg Organization, which is a youth organization from Romania, We Organization, which is a social enterprise from the Netherlands, Compro, which is a communication and consultancy company from Norway, and Donegal Youth Service, that is a youth organization from Ireland. And we organized the whole three day meeting as a design thinking process, very similar with the hackathon. We just call it networking event and we use the method. But basically what we did in those three days was to go to the process, you know, empathize, uh, collect, use the data that we collected, go and talk more with other youth workers. We visited Donegal Youth Services, uh, social enterprises, talk with youth workers, with young people, with social entrepreneurs and uh, um, define the problem, you know, define that how might we question, uh, come up with ideas, do the, you know, the ideation uh, part and the prototype and we end up actually with a draft for another you know to the, the draft of a design of a proposal actually that we submitted in march and we hope to get funding for it so that we can really develop this clip this civic lab uh, for young people um the space that uh, that we want to create for young people so again, it was a design thinking process put in practice. We said, okay, we need to walk the talk. If we tell you know, youth workers use design thinking, we should use it as well when we design the projects. And this is what we had. And yeah, very fast. <laughs> this is what I wanted to tell you and share. Of course, I'm here to answer your questions about any of this project or about my work. And thank you very much. And I hope I did not use too much time of this webinar. Paula, thank you very much. It was all really interesting, really clear. I'm really curious about the application of this kind of approaches to the 
civic engagement, let's say. I would love to explore uh, this connection because I think that also outside the schools, we need citizens that can be engaged and uh, activated in some sort of real concrete way in which to use your hands and create something for your community, starting bottom up and trying to create a diverse agenda for for the citizens from the citizens from the youth for the youth so thank you very thank much you. thank you very much and talking about youth i would love i would like to present our last but not least guest today here with us silvia fazio european project designer from escape for change an organization based in turin uh, that deals with uh, edutainment and new form of teaching experiences uh, would leave the floor to her to narrate your experiences and your experiences too in this uh, uh, European project uh, ecosystem. Thank you, Silvia. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure on behalf of uh, Escape for Change uh, to uh, introduce our work and um, our, let's say, approach, but actually it's very in line now with what you already explained until now. Uh, let me do share one moment my screen. No, sorry, the wrong button. <laughs> okay, this one. Okay, I think you can see my screen. Yes. yes, okay. Um, so, uh, as C School, uh, SK for Change is uh, a startup with social, social vocation. This means that we are for profit, but everything that we do is designed to have a social impact. Uh, I'm uh, the grant manager and the responsible of the EU international area of the, of the organization. Um, but uh, uh, I would like to introduce in general what uh, we do normally and uh, the idea uh, behind the escape for change uh, escape for change uh, uh, born to uh, try to to answer to the big question what we can do uh, which change we can create uh, in uh, people uh, especially in the new generation to change uh, the reality in something that is positive so uh, when we started to create escape for change uh, we faced many problems connected to the uh, sustainable development goals of the United Nations. In particular, we uh, started to think about, for example, the problem of the garbage and uh, what will be our future in connected, for example, to the sea, to the to the circular economy that doesn't work in this moment or about the urban green. Uh, if it's possible in the future to see three gardens and also to, to be uh, sustainable, and what does it mean sustainable? But also we started to uh, understand that uh, it's not just only totally about sustainability and climate change, but it's also about social uh, issues, relevant social issues. So we started to think also about uh, education and especially about uh, um, equalities and uh, working to support uh, um, underrepresented groups. So we started, for example, to talk about uh, the meaning of the walls, uh, the borders uh, if it's something that is connected to the climate change uh, matters or not so all of this question that is very hard to reply uh, we started to to collecting and transforming products that uh, right now are edutainment uh, um, edutainment uh, products in our organization what does it mean edutainment means education and entertainment so we believe that uh, is it possible to um, approach a problem uh, even with uh, an entertainment part and okay we can talk about what does it mean entertainment because of course uh, a game it's not uh, related uh, every time with entertainment but uh, all of our uh, tools uh, uh, developed and designed in the past uh, last year actually um, 
includes the part of the entertainment, but in a way that all participants uh, uh, start to have also a personal act and uh, try to understand uh, the the world's uh, surrounding. So uh, something that we uh, we try to put in all of our products is uh, knowledge, awareness, and intent to act. That it's part of our approach. Uh, indeed, uh, in uh, the past one uh, here. Yes, the, the last years mostly we designed uh, several entertainment tools. Uh, in particular, uh, we invested a lot in escape rooms that are uh, the most uh, important product right now in our organization, as, as both physical and online. Um, physical means uh, uh, um, in presence experience, so uh, you have the opportunity uh, to live uh, uh, in 60 minutes. Uh, um, an adventure connected to uh, an educational topics because of course uh, all of our escape rooms are um, with an educational uh, purpose so um, as you can see in your screen uh, there are many products with um, a different uh, purpose, educational purpose in particular circular economy no border urban green as you can imagine from the, their names um, the focus on each escape room is designed to have a social relevance and to support the participants to reflect about uh, one topic um, and also uh, the same approach has been uh, used in the virtual escape room so we started also to produce uh, to the escape rooms and in the future there will be also the virtual reality version but escape for, escape for change is not just only about escape rooms but also it's about games in general because we believe that it's possible to reach people also through different kind of edutainment products so, so we started to uh, design different um, games such as cooperative games that means also board game or card game that is possible uh, to uh, implement uh, in group and uh, uh, live an experience that support uh, different kind of uh, social relevance issues so um, in the in the aspect of the escape rooms uh, they can be used in different environments any educational environment so in the youth sector uh, but also in adults with seniors with a general public uh, most of our escape rooms right now um, have been applied uh, inside schools and uh, we noticed that for example it's very interesting uh, the educational impact that we have uh, in students so we started in the past six months to apply our products also in EU projects in particular, in uh, um, projects that uh, try to support uh, the approach to difficult topics like such as climate change, urban green, but also steam and uh, etc. Uh, this is uh, in the screen. Uh, it's um, so some photo from our experience. Uh, on my left, uh, there is a, a circular economy escape room, and on the right, urban green. That is an escape room uh, based for uh, very young people. <laughs> it's like six, ten years old. Uh, even right now, I'm inside uh, uh, an escape room of our organization. Um, then there is the cooperative games. This is beyond the border. It's a big game. So it's an in-presence game that is possible to live um, in group. And uh, this is very interesting because you can experience what does mean management of the resources and uh, is it very interesting also to work with students to understand the social dynamics inside the groups. This is uh, some of our products that we already tested also in school. And our approach uh, is uh, very interesting because uh, we start with an introduction that gives some inputs to the people, uh, in particular, for example, in the context of school to students. Then there is the, the game it's, uh, itself that can uh, can last 60 minutes. Then there is the debriefing part that is the most important part for us because uh, it's uh, the uh, moment in which you can uh, impact uh, on, uh, on students and in particular, uh, you can stimulate a self-reflection and then there is the call to action that it's another important aspect uh, there is the, the last part of the debriefing in which we ask to the participant what will be your uh, duty from now what you can do to change uh, your uh, your daily work uh, your daily life in general so 
this is very important process that it's applied to all, all our products. Every product is uh, created by using the co-design phase. Uh, this is very um, interesting because is it possible to include even the future uh, participants into the creation of the game itself? And uh, we use a lot uh, um, the, um, the alliance between the facilitator and the, in the context of school, uh, the alliance with teachers and uh, the, um, we uh, collaborate a lot with experts uh, because it's very important to um, uh, go straight to the point uh, because uh, um, it's part of the final impact of the games, but also everything that we do have a social impact. Indeed, everything uh, that we produce, uh, it's in line with one of uh, the sustainable development goals. Uh, mostly it's connected with the goal number four, but um, according to the type of product, uh, for example, in the climate change issue, we connect the sustainable development goals also to prove that it's possible to talk about education, but uh, that it's also connected to other topics. And then, of course, uh, we um, it's not... Uh, uh, it's very important, sorry, to remember that every game that we design, it's cooperative. That means that uh, uh, when you enter in escape room, you are not alone, but you are in a group uh, and uh, the escape rooms are designed to support uh, the um, uh, cooperation and the team building. So in, in the escape room experience, you can test your personal soft skills and improve it because you, you start to understand how uh, the other member of the group uh, um, think and act according to the difficulties and also do uh, um, is it possible to understand better how uh, the, the kind of impact that the kind of topic we have on you and uh, it's an immersive experience because for 60 minutes it's not allowed the, the phone so it's very interesting also uh, the approach of the people to different topics that they normally approach with the use of other digital tools. Um, this is possible not only in physical experience, but also in digital experiences. Even if you are uh, inside a digital escape room, you are in a very and um, true immersive experience. For um, the, um, the sector of school, uh, in the last year, uh, we um, talked a lot with many type of schools, uh, primary and secondary schools, and it's very interesting because the teacher asked uh, to us uh, to understand better how to use this kind of, uh, uh, they call new um, non-formal methodologies, but actually this is not new because the game is something that is part of our childhood and uh, um, it's new, the, the application that potentially we can apply in school, but actually it's part of our uh, personal background and the knowledge, the awareness and the long-term impact, it, it's something that uh, we should consider when we create and apply this kind of methodologies in schools. Um, this, the school environment is very interesting also because uh, we can create different kind of action by using uh, this kind of uh, edutainment tools, for example. Something that we really appreciate in the past uh, was the opportunity to create trainings for teachers and not only in involving them in the co-design phase, but also to um, provide to them the possibility to create their own edutainment tools. So this is not something that it's proper for the um, organization, but also the uh, even the professional can uh, imagine their own product uh, and they can accelerate the learning of their students or their participants in case of the youth uh, sector. The escape rooms, so uh, the experience itself can inspire and can be applied in European projects and this is very powerful because improve the, in, the final impact of the message of the EU projects inside the environment, not only applied in school but in any kind of field, and the cooperative game. So we can use a different mixed patch of uh, uh, products, entertainment products, to include a uh, long pathway. So an escape room is a very short experience, but you can, if you insert the escape room inside a long pathway, maybe uh, by using the design thinking, then there is a part of gamification and then maybe if we do the brief some uh, a long pathway you can you also you can use the cooperative games just to summarize some experience and uh, stimulate the people and specifically the participants to um, 
think and visualize their call to action, think and visualize what is the main goals they can do and they can follow in their future, for example, in the, in the topics of climate change, uh, what is uh, their role in their future, what they can do and why uh, and the, the potential uh, implication of being an ambassador of best practices. So uh, this is what we do, our informal uh, methodologies, but also non-formal. Uh, we do this uh, in uh, um, many um, uh, European projects, uh, mostly with service provides uh, issue, but in this moment we are improving our part uh, as partner uh, and uh, we are designing many uh, projects that apply our vision and our approach. Uh, but of course, uh, I need like two hours, so I don't want to, to stay more. Um, but thank you for the opportunity. If you have uh, any question, I'm here to reply to you and uh, understand uh, if there is something unclear because I know that there are too many information about games. Games are a very interesting and stimulating uh, topics, but sometimes there are too many <laughs> in inputs related to our products. And I understand that it sometimes is uh, confusing, but I'm here to reply to your question. Thank you very much for the time. Thanks a lot, Silvia. Thank you really for this sparkling passion you put in your daily job uh, we can hear you from from here i think that everybody can hear this passion from here and to the other two guest speakers today paula and benedetta um i would like to launch a brief q a sessions if you can stay five minutes more guys because I see that on our YouTube, um, on our YouTube online connection, we got uh, a double question from Herio that would like to know, uh, targeting the teachers, uh, if in your view, uh, the main difficulties that teachers might encounter in using design thinking in the classroom, which are this, these uh, difficulties that uh, might encounter the teachers, and also would like to know if you, as professionals, have seen an impact on their daily teaching. I would enlarge this question to edutainment uh, and engagement tools like uh, Silvia narrated to us until, uh, until now. So if you want to start, Benedetta, I see your hands. I know that you got to escape because you have class, so I will let you. My life is an escape room. <laughs> <laughs> I have to escape to another class at, uh, in five minutes, that's why. Um, well, um, in my opinion, um, I, I haven't had the, the, the fortune to uh, see a teacher applying design thinking in real time in front of me with a class. So I have my personal experience as a teacher because I've been working uh, uh, for uh, six years in this uh, design thinking project in uh, high school, uh, no, in, sorry, in middle school. Um, but uh, I, I was working there as uh, an external teacher. I wasn't uh, a, a normal teacher, I mean. Um, I think that uh, during this year, um, children and guys get more and more used in uh, uh, different ways of uh, teaching and learning. Uh, I remember the first years, uh, the students weren't at all used to work in groups, collaborate together and uh, they were used just in the frontal way of teaching and so this is one big uh, issue for us to let them understand that uh, teamwork uh, wasn't uh, um, uh, break time but it was we, we, we was stay, we was we, we were doing lesson it was uh, lesson time and uh, i've seen in this year that this uh, mindset has changed because uh, more and more uh, uh, teachers also in the curricular uh, in teaching, uh, they are using these uh, methodologies like uh, teamwork. And uh, um, I'm reading the question. Um, 
for uh, the teachers I met uh, in uh, my work uh, uh, and I we have tried for example to 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 teach the design thinking mindset I think that the biggest difficulties is to understand this mindset and make this mindset uh, uh, um, part of themselves uh, and to understand that uh, having fun while you are doing something it doesn't mean that you are not learning anything because there is this uh, misconception that uh, if you are having fun, <laughs> you're not learning, you need to suffer <laughs> and be sad while you're learning. And um, I think that this is uh, the, the key point uh, about uh, if uh, a teacher that uh, participate to an hackathon uh, or to a project uh, and uh, get in touch with the design thinking mindset and uh, uh, have uh, the flexibility to understand it and say and to understand how it works uh, then he can do anything the, the key point is to make the mindset uh, something of your way of thinking and uh, because after your students uh, we they will follow everything you will uh, will uh, pro uh, propose to them they will do them that but that's it that's it okay Thank you, Benny. If you want me to add, maybe to this, I don't know if it helps as an experience for uh, um, Aereo. First of all, thank you for the question. <laughs> I was thinking, oh my God, that's challenging. Um, because I could see design thinking to be used by, uh, I mean, I saw it be used in two ways by uh, teachers. One is when they use design thinking to design the classes, the teaching experience, the learning experience for um, I saw it in high school uh, students and university students. So that's where I saw teachers doing this. And uh, the big challenge or difficulty, as you said, for the teacher in this in this situation where they had to design new programs or new ways of teaching and learning for the for the students, it was the main challenge was to um, get that beginner mindset that design thinking is asking for like you go there and you empathize and you try to understand what your students need and what they would like to have in their uh, learning experience um, you have to go there with a beginner mindset this is what the design thinking says however the teachers go there with this is the hardest part for them to leave aside all the assumptions all the information they have from before and to think that these are the needs of young people these are the needs of you know what they need to do uh, of all that expertise they have so this was the biggest challenge that i saw in the work that i uh, did with teachers they they it was hard for them to leave you know, behind whatever they knew and then go there and really explore the needs and the insights about their uh, students. But they manage and uh, definitely uh, it helped them a lot to design their learning programs in a very uh, innovative, creative way that will involve the, um, the students in, you know, in, um, they'll, you know, will uh, design more interactive um, activities with the students. The other way of using the design thinking is when you use the process in the learning experience itself, like you teach, you know, the young people, the students to use the design thinking to solve a problem, because in the end, it's a problem solving method. So you teach them how to solve the problem using these uh, methods. Now, the challenges is, you know, working with the with the students on this topic, First, with empathize, it's so hard for, to take the young people out of their comfort zone, go out of the classroom and interact with users, interviewing people, talk with people, ask them questions. That was so hard, you know, I saw it's like a challenge, extra challenge for the teacher to push, you know, the, the students out of the classroom and to interact with other people. And then another one that I saw, it's from the brainstorming part where, you know, it's very important in the brainstorming to generate as many ideas and leave the, so the, the judgment and evaluation of the ideas for, uh, for next, uh, you know, for next phase. And that's very hard to do with young people because they will come up with the idea and they immediately judge. 
the other's idea. So this is really hard to keep the, the rules there. And also some of them will be very shy to express their ideas because of fear of failure, fear of judgment. So it's so hard. This will be a big challenge to make sure that in the space that you bring young people to design any project they want, to make sure that space, they, they will perceive it as safe to share and learn to fail, you know, and without feeling um, afraid that they will be judged by their colleagues or by the professor or teacher and so on. Yeah, I hope I answered. As an impact, as a positive impact, definitely I saw that teachers have a different kind of interaction with the uh, uh, students. They connect better. They uh, and uh, get you know to their emotions, as the design thinking says, get to the emotions of the people, and that's what the design thinking bring into the the, the added value. You really get to know your students and uh, you get to see their creativity in a way that you didn't see it before thank you paula this this passage on the education to failure for me is something that is the maybe the key takeaway from this hour together because we need to create safe spaces in which people can make errors stop and not feeling judged and I think that with this kind of approach and this kind of non-formal learning approaches, we could really foster spaces like that in which learning is always easier, but not just concepts or notions learning, is learning life skills, just to how to talk in public, how to interact with people and get to be a, a better citizen too, no? Exactly. So, thank you really sharing this this idea. Silvia, do you want to add something? Um, I don't know. Okay, yes. Um, regarding the edutainment part, I totally agree with uh, both of you. Um, the point uh, with the product itself, uh, it's that, uh, um, I mean, for example, an escape room, uh, the problem with uh, a tool uh, is that should be, uh, as already said, included inside a learning pathway. Uh, so should be used inside uh, a set of activities uh, together with the teachers uh, that should be prepared to use the escape room because as already uh, say every time when approach a school and try to explain the use of the entertainment it's that uh, a game is a game but if we want to create an educational game we need to put the game inside an educational context so we should prepare uh, the game and also the impact uh, the game itself uh, it's uh, an entertainment activities can be also not not in every time of course there are games uh, as already say benedetta uh, that uh, they are not funny but it's uh, it's uh, good sometimes uh, because uh, should we should uh, disconnect the idea that a game uh, it's uh, just only a fun activities anyway um the, the point is that uh, we should connect, uh, and this is very good uh, in uh, this webinar, to connect the design thinking with the tool that can be used together. And uh, I totally agree with uh, the affirmation that say that we need, we should create safe space in which the uh, students can be expressed themselves. But I would like to add that, that also teacher need safe space to express their self because sometimes the problem starts from the teachers and the teachers need support uh, and uh, uh, with European project it's possible to create this safe space starting from them and then the impact will be multiply, multiplier by their students and their families and so on. So in this sense um, the difficulties is to have a, 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 a a time and a space in their school to to have to test these opportunities and about the impact the impact depends mostly on the people so if the people are ready to um, to be open and to to explore their self through for example an entertainment tool and a design thinking process the impact is very huge and incredible Without this, it's not possible to talk about impact. We talk about mostly experiences and uh, I don't know, stories. Uh, so it depends. My advice is if you are a teacher, 
try to be open to European projects, do not resist about the impact and try to open and of course uh, try to find your opinion and uh, let, let's try our project. <laughs> yeah, this is the last call to action I would love to do also because there are a lot of uh, learning materials and stuff starting from central project to circular bricks to this kind of i would invite people to see uh, escape for change website because you will find definitely a lot of uh, inspiring activities that you can replicate and uh, regarding replication of the experience i would call uh to action the teachers to access the unitelma um, sapienza platform sustain and just register with the username and the and the email address in order to get access to all the downloadable learning material we have uh, we have developed in this uh, in this last 18 months of projects so uh in the end i would love to say thank you to our guests today, Benedetta, Paola and Silvia, uh, for their effort for this hour, for their passion and for their sparkling enthusiasm that moves us all in our daily, in our daily jobs. There are not only jobs, are maybe a little bit vocating missions in order to make exactly. the world a little better than we, we found it. And Grazie. from the control room, thank you, Gelsomina and Giulia, for the ICT part and Uri Telma for hosting uh, with its platform. I would say thank you to all the Circular Bricks Consortium because they're looking at us, perhaps, or they will have a look at us in this webinar that will be uh, posted inside the, the Sustain platform and nothing more. Thank you again, and I hope Thank to you. see you soon and explore this collaboration further in the future. Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Grazie. Ciao. Grazie. Ciao. Ciao. Thank you, Joe. Grazie. Ciao. Ciao. Grazie a tutti, buon pomeriggio. Grazie Silvia.